Hey guys, what's going on? It's Imaginary World here. Um, today I got a video. This one's going to be for beginners and newcomers. Just opened up Ableton for the first time. So if you're not new to Ableton, this video might be too basic for you. Um, you'll probably know pretty much everything I'm going over in this video. It's going to be very basic stuff. We're going to be making our first beat together. So this beat that you hear in the background, that's the one that we're going to be making. I have no clue how it sounds because I haven't made it yet. But other than that, if you like how it sounds and you want to move forward in Ableton and learn it, go ahead and stay tuned in this video and let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our preferences are set correctly, which is very boring. So you're going to hit Command or Control and then Comma and it's going to open it up. So the most important settings are going to be your audio settings, which are right here. Really, the two things you want to make sure that we got going on are that we're set to the right output. So if you have an audio interface, you'll go here and you'll select it there. Um, if not, then you just want you'll be on your built-in speakers or headphone output. Uh, and then other than that, it would just be if you have a microphone, you also want to set your audio interface here. Um, and then you have your input and output configuration. I wouldn't really worry about these too much right now. Um, it's not really going to be something you're, you're going to have to worry about when you're starting out. Uh, but other than that, if you have a lot of latency, let's say like when you press the key, it takes a really long time for that note to actually come through. This is where we're going to start, which is the buffer size. And by default, I would just set it to 256. If you're having no issues, just keep it there. If you have a lot of latency, lower it. But then if you start having issues with like crackling and dropouts, you're going to have to raise it back up. Usually when I'm recording and that kind of stuff, I have it at 441. So, all right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the fun stuff, which is actually making music. So when you open up Ableton, it's pretty daunting at first. There's a lot of stuff going on here. You have, probably have no clue what's going on. You just want to get some sounds down. So first things first, um, if you want to record audio, if like say a guitar, you're going to need an audio interface. Um, and like I showed you on the preferences, you're just going to want to make sure, I'll go back and open it up. You're going to want to make sure that your audio uh, input device is set here. So I would set it to my audio interface. And then when you got that set, you'll just go ahead and plug it in. As you can see, as I'm talking right here, this is my mic. It's plugged in with this XLR cable. And then it, in Ableton, we'll go ahead and switch back over to that view. In Ableton, you can see it moving right here. So you just want to select here and select whatever input you have it plugged into. So I have it plugged into the first input. So you click that. And then this button down here is how you record arm. And you can now see it coming in. To be able to hear it while you're recording, you would click this button so then you can hear it and that probably sounds really weird. So I'll go ahead and turn that back off. But yeah, that's pretty much it for recording. So let's go ahead and delete these audio and we're gonna go with just this MIDI one for, for right now. Okay, so MIDI is one of the bigger things that we work with in the modern age. It's basically um, with piano sounds and that kind of stuff, a lot of times it's MIDI now. A lot of times you're not really recording real instruments. Um, recording in real instruments is great, but a lot of times it just ends up being more costly. So in order to take a look at our instruments, we have our browser over here. If you do not have this, you'll have to click this little arrow right here and it'll fold this out. And you can see right here, we go to instruments. These are going to be our instrument types. Now I have Ableton Suite, which is like the most expensive version, so it comes with everything. But if you have one of the cheaper versions, we'll be sticking to that kind of stuff just so we can figure things out. So a great place to start when you're starting out is the instrument rack. You can click this little arrow down and then you have these selections here. So let's go ahead and just get a keys sound. And I'm scrolling down with the down arrow. Let's go ahead and just do this classic grand piano. Now as you can see I'm clicking and dragging onto the MIDI track. You don't really need a MIDI track there. You can actually able to make it super easy. You can just click and drag and it'll make a new one. But so now we're we this is what we've got. You got our controls down here if you want more reverb and more, that kind of stuff. We can get into that more more of that stuff later on, but right now we're just doing the basics. So if you press the tab button on your keyboard, it'll switch you to the arrangement view. Now this is where I mostly work. So here's, here's how this thing works. You click and you drag and it creates a blue section. If you create a section like this from the one to the five, that's a four bar loop. This is pretty standard stuff. I would just stick to that and then right click, insert MIDI clip. Now we have a clip and 
our piano roll pops up. If it's not there, you double click here and it'll pull up your piano roll. This little section right here is the section that we'll, you'll be looping. So if I move it over here and make sure that it's the right size, and then I come up here to this little loop button and click that, it'll start looping. So when it goes for, to the very end, it'll just move right back to the beginning. And this is a great way to start creating beats. Now, you might have noticed at this point that there's this little box down here that actually shows you what's going on. And if you see something and you want to know what it does, you can just hold your mouse over it and read it down there. If you don't want that view, you can click this. For this tutorial, I'm going to keep it on just so we can kind of see what's going on if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on. So from here, let's go ahead and just make a melody loop. Now, something that I always recommend to newcomers is opening up your web browser, getting a key signature that you want to work in, and then going to Google Images, and you can see the scale. So there's there's the scale. So this makes it really easy because it, you can only stay in scale this way. So what I would do then is I'd go back to Ableton and we're just gonna punch in the A minor scale. So there we go, there's our A minor scale. Then I'll duplicate it with Command D or Control D and then if you wanna go up and down an octave it's Shift and then up or down on the keyboard. And I'll do this to kind of create my own scale here. And then I'll move it over one so it's out of the way. Kind of zoom back in. And then if you click this fold button up here, it'll only show the keys that you have there. So we're in A minor now. From here, let's go ahead and create a melody. Now you can either use the pencil tool, which will just do one space at a time. And then if you move close enough, you can drag it out, or you can double click if you don't have the pencil tool on. Uh, there are two ways to activate the pencil tool. First is right clicking and going down to draw mode. Second would just be pressing the B button on your keyboard. Um, and when you don't have it selected, you can actually grab things. So um, the next thing I'll show you is you can adjust your grid to different sizes. Something that I like to do is just kind of put it on narrow, and if I need to, I can zoom in, and it'll give me much finer control. So let's go ahead and just create something. Bar. Down here, as you can see, there's these lines, and these are going to adjust the velocity, so how hard the notes hit. This is nice to do because if you do this, it'll make it sound a lot more human. Nothing is that robotic sounding and you can kind of just adjust these notes individually or you can kind of grab all of them and then adjust them all at once. So now we've got a basic melody down. So from here what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to find a sound that I like more than this piano sound. So I'm just going to be using built-in sounds because I don't want to go too crazy. Um, but if you're looking for additional sounds, which I'm going to use for the drums because I don't like the built-in Ableton drums, but if you're looking for additional sounds I recommend Splice and I recommend Cymatics. Um, the reason why I recommend them is just because I use them. I'm not sponsored or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about that. It's just because I use them, and that's what I like. All right, so I got this nylon guitar. I'm gonna use that for the pluck. And go ahead and put that there. And then delete the bass notes. So. So from here, I think it's a good good place to move on and show you some audio effects. So if you click this, you can have audio effects. All these things do different things, but I'm just gonna go over the basic ones, which I believe are delay and reverb. So if I turn the reverb down on here, and then delay. So as you can see, dry wet is just gonna be how much you hear of the dry signal with no effect and then how much you hear of the wet signal with the effect. Uh, and then these little controls are just control the speed and feedback and that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna go too in depth on these just because you know there's other videos that even I have made to go over this kind of stuff. But really um, what I'm trying to just show you is that you can put effects on. So that's what we got. Now let's go ahead and get a bass. So for bass, I'm gonna be using 
what is widely known as an 808 in rap music and really just today's modern music culture. So the way I'm going to use this is I'm going to go back to our instruments and I'm going to select one called Simpler. Now this is going to be something that you can use to drag samples in and then use those samples um, basically like you're on your keys. So I'm going to open up Splice now. Okay, I'm just going to go with this one. Now something important that a lot of people forget is you're going to want to make sure that your 808s are tuned. Ableton has a tuner for this. So if you're pressing a C note, you should have a C right here. I have a C, so we're in tune. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our MIDI from the piano, drag it down here, and we're going to delete this stuff, and we're going to have just the bass notes. These are too low, though, so I'm going to actually pitch them up. From here, this is where you can get interesting and try things like putting notes in different spots. Back to the mixer view. All right, really from here, the, the, the last big thing that I wanted to show was drums. And then you have a basic beat going where you can actually start doing things with it. Take the drum rack. Now there are, there are other ways to do drums in Ableton. I personally use audio. I'll just take a drum sample, say from Splice, and I'll just drag it. This is actually a vocal sample, but I'll drag it. And the reason why I do that is just because I think you have more control over it. Like you have these fades which this is all stuff you can do in the drum rack, but I just think it's more, you know, it's nice to just be able to see it right there. Unfold your MIDI, make sure it's on time and all that. I don't know, it's just, for me, it's, I feel like you have more control. But for now, we'll stick to the drum rack because it makes things a lot easier for people who could have the limitation of eight tracks in the cheapest version of Ableton, so. Um, actually, I already have some that I like saved in my favorites. If you want to create a favorite, all you do is you find something, right click it, and then choose the color and name it. Um, and then you'll click edit up here to turn them on and off. Basically, you get your drums, put them in these different cells. I'm going to put this one in, and then I'll find a snare in my user library. In order to set up a user library, go to preferences, library, location of user library, browse, you select where you want it, and then that's it. So you gotta create a folder for it. Now the thing about Cymatics that's really cool is a lot of these sample packs are actually free. So if you go on their website, cymatics.fm, you can get a lot of free samples there. From here though, we're gonna go ahead and create another MIDI track. And as you can see, it's already folded for you. So you have your kick. And if you wanna be able to hear them, click that. So let's go ahead and just. Now what I'll do is I'll zoom in so I can actually make sure I'm putting my kicks in the right spot. So you can see when you're moving it, it'll show up. Now you might be feeling what I'm feeling right now. This is really slow. So in order to speed it up, you come over to tempo spot. 140 is what I'm gonna put it at. Take it down to 135. Now from here, you basically just add stuff on that you feel like you would wanna add, so I'll add some hi-hats, there we go, got my hi-hats, select a eighth note, and then just draw them in, 
and that's pretty much how you make a, ba a basic beat. Um, other than that, I really do want to show you this. So this is where your mixer is for your drum rack. So you have the whole thing, which as you can see is very loud right now, so we actually got to turn that down. The master, you don't want it to clip, so sometimes what I'll do when I'm working is I'll just put a something called a limiter on it. You just go to audio effects, type in limiter, and then put that there. But yeah. Other than that, that's pretty much how you make a basic beat in Ableton. Um, if you guys have any questions, definitely leave a comment down below. I try to respond to every single comment. So if you have a question, you leave it there. I'll see it. I'll respond to it. There's no such thing as dumb questions. If you don't know the answer, it's not a dumb question. So just ask it and I'll answer it. So yeah, if you guys liked the video, go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.